His name is Pinocchio, and you can consider this Andean bear a celebrity of sorts here on Delmarva. In fact, people all over the peninsula are counting down to Saturday. That is when Pinocchio will be on display for the first time in his new exhibit at the Salisbury Zoo. Pinocchio came all the way from Ecuador thanks to our friends at Hertrick Family of Automobile Dealerships. He spent the past few weeks getting used to his new home and undergoing lots of checkups. He's healthy, he's happy, and two people who are already quite familiar with Pinocchio are sitting with us this afternoon. WBOC's Bill Mitch and Chris Weimer, they traveled to Ecuador to follow Pinocchio's journey back to Delmarva. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us, guys. Of course. Thanks for having us. So, I understand you didn't go alone. Yeah, it wasn't just me and Chris getting a bear. That might not have <laughs> gone well. <laughs> Uh, Chris and I went with Caleb Oliver from the Salisbury Zoo. He's one of the zookeepers that will take care of Pinocchio. And we met another zookeeper, Ian Shelley. He was already down there. He went a few days early to make sure things were smoothed out. So it was really the four of us for most of the trip. And then we would interact with people in Ecuador who had met Pinocchio, dealt with Pinocchio, seen him live his life. Yeah, yeah and I understand that a big part of the trip was learning about Andean bears. Yeah, they are endangered. And that's part of the, the interesting piece here is because this bear, which you're going to learn, uh, had nowhere to go in Ecuador. And in Salisbury, the zoo, their hope is to bring him back, and it worked both ways. He has a home, but he's also going to hopefully help with the genetic population of the bears. He's, he's new. He's not, uh, he's not been bred, so coming in, he'll add sort of new genes and hopefully uh, grow the population of, of inhabited okay, Indian bears. Okay, I didn't bears. realize that. Yeah. How about that? So did you guys get to hang out with Pinocchio? We had a solid day mm -hmm. with Pinocchio. We were there for about seven days and all about timing. So we went to meet Pinocchio at his habitat where he was at. And yeah. we got to spend a couple hours with him. And the hope was more days. They had to do some training with him. We were a little restricted. But while we were there, we were there for 10 minutes. And they said, why don't you go feed him? <gasps> it's a bear, a big bear. <laughs> it had apples and walked up to him. And he just took it out of your hand. Very he, gently. He's yeah. like a dog. He, yeah. He's like a big Andean bear dog. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, okay, so, so I'm curious about his name. Where did the name Pinocchio come from? Yeah, Pinocchio, uh, he's, he's not a pathological liar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pinocchio, when he, was, when he was a little baby cub, had a growth on his nose. And from that extended nose, they called him Pinocchio. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and he loves people in general. Oh, love oh him. very much so. Yeah, so I mean, his story was that he was a cub. Him and his mom wandered onto this farm. I guess farm dogs chased his mom away. Oh, so okay. then he was on the farm with these dogs and the farmers. The right. farmers started treating him like a dog a little bit. And then when this Andean Bear Foundation group came to rescue him, because a bear can't live on a farm, the story that we've heard is that the gentleman from that group treated Pinocchio very much like a baby. He would hold him and feed him, and we found a video online of Pinocchio this big, and there's kids petting him, and they were bottle feeding him. So because he got so imprinted on humans so early, oh. there was no releasing Pinocchio. Yeah. yeah. All right. So while you were down there in Ecuador, you actually got to explore a little bit. Yeah. Tell me about the hike you soon won't forget. <laughs> Go ahead. That, that's not my story. Uh, <laughs> that's, so, that's Bill's story. Sure. So uh, day two of Ecuador. Ecuador is uh, Quito is where we landed. That's the capital. It's at 9,000 feet, a little higher than Del Mar. But we went to this Andean <laughs> bear preservation area. It was about five hours away. It was, it was an interesting bus ride. We got there, and now we're about 10, 11,000 feet. And we got out, and the guy said, we're going to go see if we can find bears. My thought was maybe with binoculars. Right. The guy said, nope, we're going to climb down this mountain. And it's not like there's trails there. It's <sighs> like, let's just go. We got to the bottom. It was about 800 feet down. We got you, to the bottom. We're at about 10,000 to 12,000 yeah. feet in yeah. elevation. Okay. Yeah. And I'm feeling altitude right. a little bit. Oh, so you're yeah. starting to feel it. Yeah. A little. So we got to the bottom, crossed a river. We got to the bottom, the guy goes, take your shoes off, we're going across the river. Can't make it up. Went back up the other <laughs> side about halfway, and I remember we went back up, and it got so steep at one point, the other people we were with were falling, were sliding back down. We stopped. We said, we'll see you guys when you come back. And we're we sat here, in the jungle, got for all the gear. Sat in the gonna... jungle, mountainous jungle for about a half hour. <laughs> well, did, did you have these cool vests on? We did. Of course. Oh, okay. we, did. Well, yeah. we were yeah. safe. You were good. You were we safe. looked good. good. Yeah. So, we, <laughs> so now it's time to go back. And because I was having altitude a little bit, I didn't eat a whole lot because I wasn't feeling great. Yeah. Back across the river, which is great. <laughs> and we got about halfway back up, and I physically reached the point where I'm done. You were done. I'm done. Like, I was sweating and getting sick and delirious. You can ask him. It, I said numerous thin air? I said thin numerous air. times, and I, I meant it, this is 
it. This is where I'm, I'll die here. <laughs> it was bad. We laugh about it now, but it really, it was a scary moment. You know, we're in the middle of, we don't even know where. And, and it's not like we can call somebody and they're like, oh, we'll, we'll lower this thing down and it'll yeah, hop in. The, uh, there was none of that. Yeah. Escalator was out. So it was about 10 steps, we'll take a break. 10 steps. Oh my God. Yeah. Really? Up. 10 steps, we'll take a break. So then we got to a point where I could hear the top and it was like, a boost of energy. Yeah. And I was like, I'm getting off this mountain yeah. and I'm never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah. if you get invited to go for a hike in Ecuador, maybe ask more questions. Or skip would it. Be, <laughs> skip it. Would be our advice. <laughs> Why? So you have to talk a little bit about the food. I understand you ate guinea pig. Not all of us. Not no. all of us. <laughs> Chris? Guinea I did. You know, well, we're out there. We're learning the cultures. We're trying new things. I felt like I had to. It wasn't something I was super excited about. But when in Ecuador, they say guinea pig is one of their major sort of delicacies. Really? How was it? Um, without insulting the Ecuadorian people, the right. good people of Ecuador, I would say it was a little bit like turkey, uh, but a little more mus musky. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. If that makes sense, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't eat it again. I, I had a bite. It, it wasn't your palate. I've been there, done that. Yeah. Yeah. You see, you people get fish and they bring the whole fish out. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting to see them bring a whole. Guinea pig, pig out. out. That's right. Yeah, I mean, mm. little guy's heads on the on the plate. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, <laughs> we hope you guys look forward to the next time we have you in the Del Marble Life Kitchen. Yep, we know what Cooking we're making. It up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll be I'll be out that day. <laughs> <laughs> and and I understand there's an active volcano that you guys got to see. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, it, you'll see the special, but one of the most beautiful shots is this volcano Cotopaxi, and uh, Pinocchio lived right next to it. So when we saw Pinocchio, we, we looked at this amazing volcano, an active volcano, and, and we took the drone up and just got some beautiful shots. It's, oh, it's looking gorgeous. Looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. But, and act, active, <laughs> right. my, there's a fear the whole time. Obviously, I've had a lot of bad experiences so far <laughs> in this trip, but there was an active fear of myself of, that's, what do I do if something happens if with it, that volcano? It goes. And the guy who lives there, he's like, it's fine, nothing's gonna happen, it'll take days for it to erupt. I didn't care. Like, there's a volcano <laughs> there. What do I do? And he didn't really have an answer, so I was very uneasy. We, we could sit, we could, I could listen to this all day long. Let's get back to Pinocchio. Okay. He's, he's back at the Salisbury Zoo now, right? Yep. Yes. What's going on? Go ahead. Well, he's been back now for some time. We went in November. He's been back. Really, what they've had him do is been in quarantine, uh, make sure he's healthy. Mm -hmm. and, and what they're now doing is they're bringing him out to his exhibit. And this special is sort of running, uh, coinciding with that. On Saturday, he's going to be introduced to the public. So he's going um, to take a couple days to get used to where he is. Yep, he's going to get. Today, in fact, is when they moved him to his new exhibit. So he's been getting healthy, getting ready, uh, sort of gearing up to see the, the public. And also, they're going to move him there earlier before they meet the public in case he maybe finds a spot in the exhibit that the other bears haven't right. that might need, you know, some repair. Like, because yeah. he's going to explore. So they want to make sure he doesn't find any weak spots that they didn't know about. Yeah. So right. they're gonna have they close the zoo and make sure everything's all, all good to go. All right.